The Authors on the Air Global Radio Network presents the 2020 Book of the Year Awards with your hosts, Pam Stack and Terry Shepard, and these extraordinary authors, S.A. Cosby, Jennifer Ann Gordon, Pippa Grant, Carrie Ann King, and Drew Murray. And now, the executive producer of the Authors on the Air Global Radio Network, Pam Stack. Welcome to the Authors on the Air Global Radio Network and the 2020 Authors on the Air Book Awards. We have an amazing crew of honorees for you tonight, and one of these people will be named the author of the Book of the Year. So to start out the program, please meet the executive producer of Authors on the Air, the queen of the Authors on the Air Radio Network, and my buddy, Pam Stack. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Authors on the Air and the Authors on the Air Global Radio Network. Uh, you know, um, Terry, I don't know about you. A, a good book takes me places, and I get to see interesting things and meet interesting people. What does a great book do for you? It makes me live it. I feel like I'm part of the action. And I got to tell you, with each of the books that these folks have written, I I discovered new dimensions of myself that I didn't even know existed. And that's an, the best possible outcome. Isn't that wonderful? I want to tell everyone that this is not a personality contest. We have a closed group um, who reads books all year long, and they make their recommendations for their favorite book. The moderator of the group keeps an Excel spreadsheet, something I do not know how to do. Most of you know I'm a tech twit. Um, <laughs> it is true. At the end of 12 months, which the books are gathered from December 2019 to the end of November 2020, those top those people are given to me, the names are given to me, of the five, sometimes four, sometimes six most popular authors. So, um, Terry, you're talking to some of our winners in their categories. Who are you starting off with? I get to start off with... Jennifer Ann Gordon, who is New Hampshire born, a student of theater arts, who's been a magician's assistant, an actress, an artist, dance, and muse. Her books are drawn from the dark side, and she's honored tonight for Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent, a tale that Prairie's Book Review calls an exhilarating story packed with magnificently complex characters, psychological intrigue, and horror. And Cassie Romo Rizzi calls it Dark, twisted, and lyrical. I don't think there's any higher praise than that, is there, Jennifer? <laughs> um, so the rest of Cassie's phrase, I remember it because it's on the cover, I think, and it says, uh, dark, twisted, and lyrical, uh, is something, and I couldn't put it down or something. There was something, and I was, when I got her review, I was just so happy uh, because she, she got the music of the language and she got uh, the, the subtle, slow, creeping dread of the entire book. And... Uh, and I was just thrilled. I'm always thrilled when people say, I didn't know how screwed up you were. Or, uh, you, you seem so nice. You seem really normal. I'm like, oh, thank you. That's medication. <laughs> well, for those of us that you don't know also, Jennifer is quite a talented lady. She does mixed media as well. And um, this is her beautiful book that she sent me. Thank you so much. Thank Thought you. I'd go ahead and share that. She's got she's got talent, more talent in her fingertips than I have in my whole overweight body. <laughs> this is what happens when you can't do math or science <laughs> or spreadsheets. You have to learn how to make a living somehow uh, with no business skills. <laughs> So my question for you, Jennifer, is what is the secret sauce that makes a great horror story? Um, you know, to me, it's always going to come down to the characters. And I would say create characters that you love, even if you love to hate them, but create characters that people will feel incredibly strong emotions for. So in Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent, my main character is Adam. He's not always easy to love, but you feel for him. He'll rip your heart out over and over again. So I say create a character that everybody loves and then 
torture them in some way, shape, or form, uh, psychologically, <laughs> physically, sometimes, emotionally, especially. And and if the if you've done a good job as an author and people love your characters, they will feel the same fright and pain that they do. And as a horror writer, that's all I can ask for. Well, congratulations <laughs> on being honored in your category. It was a great story. I loved every page. Thank you. Yay, Jennifer. <laughs> Our winner for Book of the Year in Horror. So happy for you. Thank you. I had the honor of talking to author S.A.A. Cosby, Sean Cosby, who I had the pleasure of meeting at Bowburn in St. Pete. I have to tell you, when you get hugged by Sean Cosby, your whole body gets pulled into this <laughs> giant bear hug. And, you know, I'm 5'3". Sean is like uh, three feet taller than me or something. And it was just a remarkable experience. <laughs> I think you've been on several well, of the other shows in the network, but but honestly, to have you here tonight as the winner for the best Southern Noir crime thriller, I'm I am so happy you're here. Congratulations on all the accolades that you've received. Um, I don't know if if readers and listeners know, and on our our viewers tonight know that. Stephen King was doing a video interview of my friend James Lee Burke, and before he did the interview, he picked up Sean's book and he said, "By the way, get this book. It's amazing. Oh wow! And it's in video, so to have Stephen King without even Sean's notice, <laughs> pick up the book and say, this is what I'm reading, and it's damn good. You know it's good." So let me tell you a little bit about Sean, and I have to read from my list because it, uh, you know, I can't remember everything. I like to barely get my shirt on right side in, as everybody knows. Um, Sean is an Emmy <laughs> award-winning uh, writer from southeastern Virginia. He's the best-selling author of Blacktop Wasteland, the book that he's winning this award for tonight. Um, he's the Amazon number one mystery and thriller of the year, and number three for best book. 2020 overall. He's a New York Times Notable Book of the Year, a New York Times Book Reviewer's Editor's Choice, and Goodreads Choice semifinalist. He's also the author of the upcoming Razorblade Tears. I cannot wait for that one. Um, Sean has appeared in a lot of anthologies. He's got short stories. He's got loads of books. You've got to go see his Amazon page to see everything he's done. Sean, I know that your family is a big influence on the way you write and the way you govern your life. Can you tell us a little bit about your family, the ones who are here and the ones who have gone? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, my father has 11 brothers and sisters. My mother has five brothers and sisters. So I have a ton of cousins. So basically what that means is that I had to leave town to date anybody because I'm related to everybody in my hometown. <laughs> so it's like, we got to go over two bridges. <laughs> we got to always get our dates for the prom of two counties over. So... And that's the worst thing when you go out like to the basketball court as a kid, or you go to a bonfire, or what we call down here a field party. It's like, who's that? That's your cousin. You can't talk to her. Well, <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, my family, <laughs> my family is such a big influence. I, I, I come from a, I, I come from a long line of uh, what I like to call backyard uh, philosophers and barbecue orators, and you know, folks that love to tell a story. And I learned my love of storytelling sitting at the knee of my uncles and my aunts that so they play spades or, or cooked at the grill and how they would just tell us stories from their childhood and from their youth and their misadventures. And so when I started writing, I, I wanted to incorporate that feeling into my work. I wanted you to feel like I was sitting across from you at a, at a picnic table and I was telling you this thing that I saw that happens. Like, you ain't gonna believe this. And so that's the way I try to approach my writing. And, um, you know, my, my uncles and my cousins, you know, like I have one particular cousin I used to get in trouble with all the time because I would sneak out and go drag racing with him. And, you know, I had another cousin that was a local, um, a local near the well and tough guy whose nickname was The Mall because he had fists uh -oh. like hammers. And so I come from this family of just characters and just I wanted to I wanted to uh, I wanted to tell their stories and tell their tales. And, and hopefully people will enjoy hearing about them as much as I enjoy living with them. 
Sean, you know, the um, the business of books is part of what we talk about at Authors on the Air, and it starts with great ketchup, as Pamela Fagan Hutchins likes to say, and yours is the tastiest that I've ever tasted. But it also involves a good deal of promotional skill and charisma. How did you get to become such a successful author by our standards? Uh, uh, it was all by accident. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all a horrible mistake. <laughs> Someone needs to come in and straighten it out. Um, I mean, I think <laughs> I think it starts with, in all honesty, I have a really good agent. And I'll, I'll tell y'all really quick how I met my agent. And I don't know if Pam remembers this. She might have heard the story. But in, in St. Petersburg in 2018, I was promoting my first novel, which was on an independent uh, label, uh, Intrigue Publishing. I was public, I was uh, promoting a dark, My Darkest Prayer, which came right. out in January of 2019. So I went, down, I went down to Florida, and I was really there as a fan. I wanted to get my book signed by, like, you know, Lee Child was going to be there and Jordan right. Harper and all these writers that I really, really admire. And so a friend of mine named Eric Pruitt was putting together a panel for Southern Crime Fiction. And he said, hey, I want you on this panel. I was like, man, I just got a couple short stories. I got a book coming out next year. He's like, I don't care. I want you on the panel. So I got on the panel. I was on there with like a real writer. Yeah. Yeah. Eric Pruitt. Uh, he's a Southern writer and filmmaker. I was on there with Ace Atkins, who's an incredible writer in his own right. He also uh, writes the, the uh, Spencer series. I was on there with Steph Post, who's a magnificent lyrical poetic writer. And I was on there with Alice Agur, who made the most versatile writer in, in America. And so we had this really great panel. And at the end of the panel, somebody got up, we were taking questions. And this person said, well, I don't really have a question. I have a comment. I'm like, all right, here we go. Let's get it, because you know that's gonna be a <laughs> that's gonna be a rough comment. And so she made this really, 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 really ignorant comment, and I made a really, really, really smart ass comment back, and, <laughs> and everybody laughed, and <laughs> and so everybody laughed. And after that well, panel, um, a, a guy walked up to me in the lobby, and he said, "My name is Josh Gessler, and I'm an agent." He said, "I'd love to talk to you about your writing," and it, he yeah. just it just took off from there. I have to tell you that you know, Josh Tetzler is the premier agent. agent in the world in the country. He will if you don't have film rights for this book soon, I'll be very surprised because Josh is that fantastic. Oh no, uh, I, I actually uh, the film rights were sold early this year, and uh, <laughs> a, uh, Virgil Williamson. Yeah, so the, the co-writer of the movie Mudbound. Uh, the uh, Academy Award co-writer of the movie Mud- Mudbound is writing the screenplay. So, so hopefully in, in a couple of years you'll see Black Top. Yes, Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, so, Thank you so, much. Our, our 2020 Book of the Year award for Southern Noir is to S.A. Cosby, Sean Cosby. Congratulations, Sean. Thank you so You're much. Best. Thank you, you so much. Best. Thank you. Well done. I'm tossing it back to my partner, Terry. And if you're just joining us, you're watching the Authors on the Air Global Radio Network with Pam Stack. I'm Terry Shepard, and this is the 2020 Book of the Year Awards. And what a group we've got. And I get the honor of talking with Pippa Grant, a USA Today bestselling author who writes romantic comedies that her website promises will make tears run down your leg. It's true. It's she, true. Says, she says that when she's not writing, she's a stay-at-home mom and housewife who is, quote, trying to prepare her adorable demon spawn to be productive members of society <laughs> while fantasizing about long walks on the beach with hot chocolate chip cookies. That's great. We honor her tonight for Real Fake Love, a story that introduces her fans to two new heroes with cameos from several characters from uh, past books. Luca's broodiness paired with Henry's klutziness is a wit and winning combination, writes an Amazon reviewer. Pippa, congratulations. Thank you. Your books are known for their laugh out loud wit. Where did that sense of humor come from? Oh, I've loved to laugh since I was little, little, little. Like, I can remember watching Bugs Bunny and Wile E. Coyote and all of that with my dad. And then, you know, like Sean, um, my mom has a huge family. She's one of 10. So we're not quite as big. And I'm not sure we're quite as funny either. But I grew up just listening to them talk and play pranks on each other. And, like, you, just, you get together at the holidays. And I would just sit on the wall and watch because it's just so funny when you get that many people together. And they all have such diverse personalities that you never know, like, what you're going to get when they're all together. But you put, 
you put loving the laugh together with coming from a funny family that's big and then like i used to watch whose line is it anyway all the time and i just i love i love to laugh <laughs> and i love to think about funny things it's it's literally been like my writing has been what saved the year for me because 2020 has been 2020 right yes. and being able to escape into some writing and laugh all day long it's been really great so I will tell you that Pippa has a, a private clo a group called the Pip Squad, and she has one of the best <laughs> newsletters ever. I have I have probably downloaded every book that she's written. So, um, I, you know, I have five Kindles, and they're all dedicated to different genres. Pippa takes up a lot of space on my Kindle. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> so honored. This is so much fun to read your books. I mean... I laugh, I cry, I almost wet my pants every time I'm reading one of your books. And, you know, There's a quote for Amazon, Pippa. You can put that on. Really, you know, for someone who reads as much as I do, I, I absolutely I wholeheartedly recommend Real Fake Love. It is terrific. When are you really, when's your next book coming out and what's it going to be? Soon, soon. Um, early 2021, I'm releasing a new book called The Hot Mess and the Heartthrob. And... It's sort of an ode to 2020 as well, because we can all relate to showing up in a hoodie for an interview, because we realized we've got to put the kids to bed. And okay, Jennifer's <laughs> naked under her shirt, so it doesn't matter. I'm wearing sweatpants and a glitter top. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. I'm, I'm just you ninjas as you do. so it, it's been... Like every day is, I feel like a hot mess. So, yeah. <laughs> so congratulations. People, say, people yes. say that they love your covers. Who does your design for your Thank covers? Thank you. Uh, Lori Jackson designs my covers. And so she she's brilliant. I'll pay her and I'll be like, do you like this guy? And she'll say, oh, yes, he's hot. Let's get him and put him on a cover. <laughs> <laughs> and those are uh, those neighbors. Who are those, those guys? Are neighbors, family members, <laughs> high school boyfriends. Where do you pick up your mom? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wander. Wander is one of my favorite photographers. There's, um, I don't know how many people are self-published here, but we have a whole in romance especially, we have a, a bunch of people who do custom photo shoots just for romance novels. And, like, the photographers will go out and find the hottest guys they can and put them in the hottest poses they can. And then it's a tough job, but somebody has to look through all <laughs> of those photos. Next time our <laughs> gets together when we can all, you know, get together and, and see each other, please invite yeah. him. I, are you really, <laughs> his, his name is Keith Hutchins. That's oh my God. Hutchins on the on the cover. <laughs> so congratulations, well done. Congratulations, congratulations on your, your romance book of the year, Pippa. Thank um, you. We, I would like everybody to know that Pippa is has another name, and she writes under a different <laughs> genre. We are not revealing that because the books are so different. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you, go to Pippa. <laughs> Grant and find her. Okay. <laughs> hey, you know what? I get the honor of talking to Drew Murray. Hi, Drew. How are you? So Drew uh, terrific. came. Uh, I got his book because I'm a first reader for Ocean View Publishing. Um, Pat, I don't know if you know Pat and Bob are just up great the road. Company, from great company. They're fabulous, aren't they, Terry? Mm -hmm. So Drew, they're right up the road from me. I'm uh, probably an hour and a half drive. And I, so I, we've met a bunch of times oh, at a wow. bunch of different conferences and everything else. But what I love is what you wrote on your, on your, your website. You said, Drew is at the intersection of technology and creativity, hard at work creating another thrilling story, passionate about tech, the forces that drive it, and its impact on society. You created the Will Parker series both to entertain and to examine the darker side of technology. With this past year, and most people glued to news and everything else, and just recently in the news about hacking into some of the federal government, I know that you are a tech guy, and that's where your first love is. Um, are you seeing better things for technology for humans or are you seeing some really nasty trends really, really. Uh, the two always go hand in hand every time technology takes a step forward and brings uh, something wonderful and a benefit to society 
uh, somebody figures out a way to use it for terrible, nefarious purposes. So um, it doesn't matter what it is. We humans always seem to do the same thing over and over and over since go. we first picked up a rock as a tool. Um, so yeah, it's been so it's been I a want heck to of a year for sure. All to Broken Genius, this is Drew's book <clears throat> that is the 2020 book of the year for techno thriller. When I read this book, I sat down in the evening to start it. Now, you know, most of my friends know I re I don't have a television, so I read about 400 books a year across genre. I picked this book up and I didn't go to bed till two in the morning. I had to finish it. It takes place only <laughs> over a few days. Aww. And I'm going to let Drew tell you a little bit about who Will Parker is and what an interesting guy he is and how he became who he was in the story. Will you give us a little bit of information, Drew? For sure. Will Parker is a... He started out as a Silicon Valley genius prodigy tech CEO, young, almost billionaire, enormously successful, uh, really confident about who he is and where he was going. He was looking forward to putting his name alongside people like Zuckerberg and Gates and Jobs uh, when he makes a mistake that blows his entire life up. Uh, like you say, take that character, make the worst thing happen to them. So his whole life is destroyed by this mistake that he makes. The deal that was going to, to take his company to the next level falls apart. Um, and he was helping the FBI uh, locate a serial killer and rescue a victim. And he, he made a mistake and she died. So then he changes his life entirely um, to try and make amends for that night and the mistake that he made. So he joins the FBI as an agent in the cybercrime division and brings all the, that uh, talent and experience in tech uh, to bear for the FBI. And so we meet him uh, when he's pulled into a murder at a Comic-Con, uh, which is a really fun environment to write about. And uh, at that Comic-Con, there are clues that the technology his company was trying to buy and disappeared the night of the Fukushima nuclear disaster has suddenly reappeared. And so he's brought back full circle into this mistake that he made and trying to make amends for it and trying to uh, keep this enormously powerful technology from falling into the wrong hands. Now, I know that you are a fan of, of, of cosplay. You like closed room puzzles, right? To have to, escape to, rooms, yes. Escape rooms and all. Did that in did that motivate you or inspire you to write Broken Genius? It inspired me to set Broken Genius where it is and ah, immerse it in the environment that it is because it's just such a the the Comic Con environment, the puzzle environment, yes, uh, the the fandoms is just such a wonderfully positive environment that I wanted to take that and then make something really horrible happen right in the middle of it. Uh, I thought that would be really interesting and exciting, and and that became the book. You know, I think Jennifer is also a cosplayer too. <laughs> yeah. um, she, and I used to own a comic book store. So. You owned it, and she owned a dance studio. <laughs> so you can find a lot of her videos online of, oh, of she and Roman, her husband who is also our video producer, um, doing all these dance moves, but their clothing is so outrageous. So which came first, the Comic-Con or the book, or have you been going to Comic-Cons yourself? I have been going to Comic-Cons for years. Oh, years okay. and years and years. Okay. All right. <laughs> so let me ask you, who's, who's the favorite character or role player that you've met? Uh, the favorite, the favorite actor that I've met, the mm -hmm. actual character, mm -hmm. uh, I met Sir Patrick Stewart, which was amazing. <laughs> he's, oh, he's oh, such no. a gentleman. Oh. He's so graceful. Yeah. Right, Jennifer? Amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> oh my gosh. You I'm know, um, you on the air. Are you okay? Sean, <laughs> you know me. I'm a little bit, but I'm Yeah, I'm trying here. to help. <laughs> I know you are, honey. <laughs> Sir Patrick Stewart, <laughs> my goodness gracious. Yeah. Well, Terry, I know you read Broken Genius also. What did you think, my friend? And what do you want to ask Drew? Well, you know, Drew, and this is a good question for every one of you. I think probably in Drew and in Jennifer's world, it makes more sense. <laughs> but have you ever considered purposing a story like Broken Genius as a graphic novel? 
Oh, if I had any artistic ability or sensibility at all, for sure. <laughs> Talk to my partner right here. He does graphic novels. He is great. Terry is, is fantastic with graphic novels. He just put his thriller out in graphic novel form. And also, and I should say, everybody, Terry Shepard is a fabulous author of the Jessica, <laughs> the Jessica Vega books. Uh, and she is he also writes a fantastic children's series. He does audiobooks. The movie that you saw, the big opening that you she saw. You can't keep a secret, Pippa. You know, they won't tell who you really are. But you just... <laughs> <laughs> What can I tell you? You're not much of a secret. <laughs> no, not about, this is not about, 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 thank you very much. But I want to ask Jennifer the same question. I think your story would be great as a graphic novel. Uh, Have you ever considered it? And you're an I artist did. too. And yeah. you're an artist. Yeah. Um, I'm not a. I'm not an illustrator though. So originally, uh, back about 15 years ago, beautiful, frightening, and silent. I had planned as a graphic novel, but I couldn't uh, find the right artist to collaborate with, and it was so important. Uh, to find somebody. Yeah, I know she's pointing right at you, Terry. Uh, so <laughs> my, my original thought was it was going to be a graphic novel. Uh, but then that kind of, it didn't come to fruition. And, uh, and then a novel came out of it 10 years later. And, but I'm, it's still in the back of my brain. I'm still searching for the right artist. There you go. Yeah. I want to congratulate <laughs> Drew Murray for his win for best techno thriller for 2020. Thank you. Congratulations, Drew. Thank we're you very so much. We're so happy that you're here. Terry, so, we um, are not leaving the, we're not leaving anybody out. You have a favorite that you want to talk to, don't you? I sure do. Absolutely. I, uh, Carrie Ann King has actually been a guest on my Authors on the Air program. And uh, the big secret is that she is a woman of many, many talents. Uh, she is she indeed. Is, she enjoys a successful split personality as an author. <laughs> As Carrie Schaefer, <laughs> he writes fantasy with its teeth sunk into reality. And as Carrie Ann King delves into women's fiction that embraces the dark and twisty realms of humanity. We honor her for her latest, a great book called A Borrowed Life, which is a story of rejuvenation, discovery, trial, and triumph, where her protagonist loses a husband and gains her freedom with all the twists and turns that come with it. Part of uh, my authors on the air um, uh, podcast is that I always read a segment of the book for the listening audience before I introduce the guest. And Carrie Ann is a lot like Sean in that her book is ideal for an audiobook presentation because the prose just flows like butter. Carrie Ann, congratulations. Her, do you have some of her book in front of you? Can you give us a, a little preview? Oh, my goodness. Well, maybe the first what? chapter. I, you know, <laughs> no, I want to be fair to everybody. It's not right to single out somebody when we've got so many other great people here that are doing Here's this. her book. Carrie, oh, and, an and I want to also tell you that, that Carrie, Carrie Schaefer, a.k.a. Carrie Ann King, also has a very popular podcast, a video cast in our network called Tell Me Your Secrets. You've got to go and see it. She's hysterical. So does Jennifer Ann Gordon. She has a show called Vox Vomitus. Now, Which I love. <laughs> I love that too. I love, I love that I know you, Jennifer. The title is perfect. <laughs> so much fun. So, so, Terry, I want to ask you something. How do you... You write in two different genres. You write kind of a paranormal, supernatural, and you also write straight women's fiction. How do you split yourself in half there <laughs> and decide what you're going to write? <laughs> I, I would I would love to answer that question. First, I want to know if you can actually hear me because we I'm can still hear you. frozen. Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. I just say, I'm going to move. We, we've just we've put a spell on her, and so Carrie <laughs> is stuck uh, in, in very slow motion. <laughs> one, of, one of my paranormal worlds. You know, it's not as much of a split as you would think, Pam. Um, I've been thinking about this lately. All of my books have really strong characters. It's it's character-driven fiction. Even in the paranormal mystery, which is very much a mystery and has a bunch of sure. weird paranormal stuff going on, um, the characters are still front and center, and it's that character development that makes me happy as a writer. Um, and they all have that really kind of dark, weird sense of humor, no matter what I'm writing, always that shows up. 
So those those things run through both of my lines. And that makes Wonderful. it easier. So I want to ask everybody here, Terry, whose book is on your nightstand? Uh, right now, well, there's so many. I know. I keep sending you books. <laughs> <laughs> I am, uh, because I love good narration, um, I'm actually uh, listening to several things right now, some uh, historical fiction. Let me bring up my Hoopla account, and I can tell you exactly what it is that is that's going on now. I, I really I'm drawn to um, the, the kind of work that um, that Sean does. I love reading stories about the experience of people that I don't know. Um, I want to understand humanity a lot better. So um, I just love that that dimension of people who have had experiences that are nothing like mine. Like yours, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, like I don't know what it's like to be sawed in half as a magician's assistant. <laughs> Well, I, know what, I, I know what it's like to raise <laughs> demons, Claude. <laughs> you notice that we have half of Jennifer. Yeah, yeah. yeah they have half. <laughs> We're not counting the half that's in the sweatpants. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that part's been chopped off. Yeah. So, for Jennifer, who's on your, who are you reading? Whose book is on your nightstand? Um, I'm sort of reading three books right now because I always read uh, the book of the person I'm interviewing for my show, Vox Vomitus. So right. I just finished... Uh, today, actually, right before she was on our show, uh, C.J. Cook's The Nesting. Oh, she's mm -hmm. wonderful. Oh, 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 yeah. That book was everything. Good. Uh, so I just finished that. Um, I'm in a true crime book club with uh, Spookish Mommy on Instagram. She is one half of the owner of Nightworms with Mother Horror. So I'm reading The Hidden Valley Road, which is about a family of uh, 12 children, six of whom have severe schizophrenia. Oh my and, God. uh, and I'm also in another book club with the ladies of horror fiction and we are reading the year of the witching. So I just started that. Sean, who are you reading? I'm currently reading two books. Um, I'm reading Blackwood by Michael Ferris Smith, a really good, uh, oh. Semi-supernatural, yeah, and um, I'm also reading. I'm finishing up Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier. Jennifer Hillier. Jennifer Hillier. If nobody knows, she is one of the best thriller writers yes. working today. Um, so those two books really are really are, are are tearing me apart because I'm trying to decide which one to read. I, I alternate. So, <laughs> Pippa, who are you reading? Um, I am, I'm bouncing between audiobooks right now. I'm listening to Michelle Obama's Becoming and also oh, Charles. Yeah. yeah. I'm about halfway through and I'm, uh, listening to Charles Duhigg's Power of Habit too. And then my Kindle is ready to dive into Kaylee Loring's A Bossy Christmas because I love her voice. She's funny. Oh, my home funny. is where, <laughs> my home is happy, funny romance. So that's where I go for my, there you go. my downtime with the Kindle. And Drew, who are you reading? Uh, I am reading Anne Cleves right now, a Shetland oh, mystery. Oh, yeah. I, love her lady. I met her in London last year at Capital Crime. Um, I guess, you know, drum roll, please. You know what? I'm handing my partner the envelope to find out who is <laughs> oh. our <laughs> interview winner. How fancy that was. You ready? You like that? <laughs> I feel like Karnak here. There you go. <laughs> Gotta hold it on your forehead. <laughs> the authors on the air 2020 Book of the Year award goes to S. A. Cosby. Yes. Black top <laughs> waist. Congratulations, John. Congratulations. Well, man, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Say... Thank you all so much, Nate. Go ahead, I want to say thank you to authors on air. I want to say thank you to authors on air. Thank you to Pam Stack, who is always, ever since I met her at Bouchon, has always been one of my biggest cheerleaders. It really means a lot to me. She is, she's such a great, strong voice for crime, for fiction, but especially for crime fiction. Thank you to everybody else that was nominated. Uh, I, I love, love, love listening and meeting and get, getting to know writers. Nobody knows what it's like to be a, be a writer except another writer. And so it really is incredible to be here with you guys and i thank you to terry for uh hosting everything god i'm blown away thank you so you much I got, thank you so thank much, you so much. So much. Well, i want to remind everyone that our romance book of the year award went to pippa grant 
Hello, Papa. Congratulations for real fake love. Um, Jennifer Gordon won the Book of the Year Award for Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent. Let me pull that book up so you can see it. Drew Murray with his debut novel for Broken Genius. And I'm assuming we have a new Will Parker coming out soon, yeah? There is going to be more Will Parker. I can't wait. And Carrie Ann King, a.k.a. Schaefer, who is my goat-loving friend. I love you dearly. Congratulations on your win for, for women's fiction. And I want to also thank my partner in crime and in podcast, the spectacular author, Terry Shepard. Thank you for being with me. And Pam, on behalf of all of us who have had our lives changed by knowing you as the world's craziest book lover, <laughs> thank you for all you do to promote the craft. I think, yes. you know, I agree with John and everybody here that part of the, we may have been drawn to writing because we thought we knew what it was all about. <laughs> but the reason that we stay is because of the fellowship, the friendship, the people that we've met, mm -hmm. and the acceptance. This is one community where there is no competition because the hunger is there in such great demand that there's always room for a good book. And we, in this program tonight, have met some of the greatest. The greatest. Crop. Thank you so much, everyone, for being with us. I want to wish you all a happy thank holiday. You. Whichever you celebrate, and God, thank you, Jesus, for a new year with a vaccine <laughs> and with more wonderful books. I love you all. Thank you for being with me.